Welcome to the Colby Cast, episode 41. Glad you could join us. In today's episode, the cast is joined by two of the most talented and hardworking figures behind the scenes here at Colby, Bridget Tobaldi and Lauren Huang. Even if you've not met them, you have more than likely seen their work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi there, I'm Bonnie, Colby homeschooling mom, liturgical musician, podcast fanatic, heavy library user, and Colby parent ambassador. I have two lads and two lasses. The youngest is in fifth grade, the eldest is in 10th, and this is our fourth year homeschooling with Colby. And I'm Hope, Bonnie's younger sister and a Colby alumna in a phase of life after being a student, but before becoming a parent. I studied communication theory and philosophy in college, then I went to law school. Now I'm an attorney, an avid home cook, and the fun aunt to Bonnie's kids. And I'm Jordan. After slipping through a thousand cracks, I completed a PhD in history and literature of ancient Christianity at Göttingen University in Germany. Now I teach Greek and Latin at Colby and serve as the Director of Public and Alumni Relations. Perhaps you've learned about Colby on Facebook or Instagram, seen a post, had someone send something to you, tag you somehow on some sort of post relating to Colby. Maybe that's how you're here today listening to this episode. We have the ladies making the magic happen, Bridget Tabaldi and Lauren Wong, the social media team for Colby Academy. Welcome to the Colby cast. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks. Can you tell us a bit about yourselves and how you found your way to Colby or how Colby found you? Sure. Um, my name is Lauren Wong. I'm a technical assistant at Colby. Um, I help out with the um, technical difficulties that teachers and students may encounter in their online classes. I'm also on the marketing team and manage the sending of emails to our list of subscribers, as well as general school communications to our currently enrolled families. And then, of course, I um, help out with the communications via social media. Um, I, I started working for Colby about two years ago. Um, I actually attend the same parish as Mrs. Megan Lingle. And she posted my job description to our Catholic Moms Facebook page. So if it wasn't for social media, I wouldn't have my job right now. Oh, that works well. So I am um, Bridget Tibaldi, and I have been with Colby since 2018. Um, I actually started as a science instructor. So I may have or hopefully will teach some of your students uh, chemistry. So I started off teaching AP core and honors chemistry, still doing that, love it. Um, And then in this past year with COVID and everything that all the craziness, um, I was very blessed to be able to kind of step up into a different role as well. So instead of just um, teaching, I am now kind of, how did they describe, like the octopus who has like fingers and everything. So I am part of the marketing (laughs) team as well. Um, Social media team too, obviously. And then just do some other little bits of bits of uh, projects here and there. So uh, help with self-paced courses, online access, just a couple of random different things like that. Um, But yeah, really just enjoying trying to get some new posts to our families and really just trying to bring that Catholic culture that we here at Colby as staff um, are really blessed with and hopefully trying to carry that over to all of you and your families. Fantastic. I was delighted one day to start up a, a chat thread on the Colby page about, I forget what it was about. And you responded, Bridget. I was like, hey, I know you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to it's good to see a familiar face. And I've had some good exchanges with Lauren as well about a range of things. I was sort of overly, um, I don't know if obsession is the right word, but I was overly <laughs> fixated on getting a certain calendar to subscribe to my personal <laughs> one. And I kept emailing Lauren and she was so sweet to be like, oh, that's great. Have you tried this? So thank you both for, for that. So it's been a pleasure dealing with you on those occasions. Your social media usage yourselves, are you guys, would you guys call yourselves big time social media users, sort of moderate? What, what, how would you describe yourselves? Yeah, I um, I have not been a huge social media user. I'm definitely a part of that uh, social media generation. I think it was becoming um, really popular when I was just entering high school. So it, it's kind of, I, I haven't known a lot of life without it in many ways. Um, I 
did uh, enter the convent for a time and did not have my um, Facebook account. So I think it was about five years that I never had any type of social media, which in many ways I'm, I'm thankful for because coming back to it, I feel like um, I'm pretty balanced in how I handle it um, in my personal life. And I am really passionate about using it for um, for good. And I, I love that about Colby Academy. And now that we're using social media more is that we're using it for the good. And I think that nowadays we are finally figuring that out a little bit where when I was entering high school, it was like there was too much information and no one knew what to do about it. No one knew how to handle it. And, and I really believe that that social media is being put to good use um, um, nowadays. So I do use my social media, but I am by no means um, someone who uses it all the time or posts all the time, but I can definitely see the value in it. So I'm sort of in the same boat as Lauren, where kind of started whenever I was in high school. I hate to say this, but I've had a Facebook account since 2016. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I wish I didn't have one for that long or use it as often, but I mean, I guess that's just the world that we're living in. And similarly, I use it, but I actually don't really post on it often. I use it more of like a tool in order to find things that I want to find or stay connected with people that I normally wouldn't talk to otherwise. Um, but I do have a slightly different um, use of it as well. We have a small family business and we actually use it, um, Facebook and Instagram, in order to promote the business. Um, so I've been doing that for about nine years now. We don't do any like boosted posts or advertisements or anything like that. So it's all just organic uh, reach. So it's been kind of cool to kind of take that and bring it to Colby. So instead of um, posting about our business, though, I now actually get to post about Catholic faith, which is really wonderful. Um, so yeah, just sort of already had this um, taste for using social media for a business sense, but then now again, get to tailor it towards our Catholic faith and try to reach people in a different sense is really, really wonderful and very excited about that. You certainly do bring the experience to, it sounds like you're ideally suited to to be serving Colby this way. Have you found there to be a really steep uptick in how much engagement you're getting from people who are interested in Colby? Has it been a major way that the word about Colby is getting out? Yeah, I would say so. So um, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, um, this social media team is very new. Um, it only really came about at the beginning of the 2020. 2020-21 school year. And the reason for that is because there were two people who were previously sort of running the social media um, where um, the dean of students, um, she was posting mm -hmm. her memes and they're wonderful and great, but she just didn't have the time to dedicate to that social media, um, that platform. So she was very gracious about letting us sort of take over the Facebook side of things. And then Mrs. Amanda Hayes was also doing the Instagram, but she is teaching a ton of classes this year. So again, she very graciously said like, can you take over this for now? But they had done a really good job at sort of getting um, a good following. And then from there, we just are trying to reach more and more people. So they really set this, the, they set us up pretty well for it. But yes, so every week we have a social media team meeting and it's always fun to go through and look at the statistics. And most weeks we do have those green arrows that shows that our engagement and our page likes and everything like that is going up, which is wonderful. Um, but the more that people can like, share, comment, save posts, obviously the better. And that way we can reach as many families or potential families as possible because we really do just want to spread um, Colby's Catholic curriculum to as many people as we possibly can. We really have appreciated how you've been promoting our Colby Cast episodes each week. Bridget and I collaborate a lot on the images that we use. So, um, and then collaborating on uh, when we post social media posts and send emails because everyone uses different platforms. That's something else we've done too at Colby just this year 
is we're starting to tap into our YouTube channel more and Instagram. We have a Pinterest account now. Um, eventually, we may try to get to Twitter. Um, but right now, we've, we've got a lot going on. And we're, um, you know, just trying to reach people in different ways. So I I love working with email inboxes. Um, and I love communicating in that way. But but there's something about social media that encourages engagement. You know, I, I don't find out whether someone liked my email or <laughs> someone, you know, felt a certain way about the email. There's there's nothing there. I'm looking at whether people are opening the emails or clicking links. And that's really the gauge of how emails are doing. So I think that as long as we're collaborating and, and working together, which has been great with the social media team is we're really um, making everything more cohesive and um, and making sure that everyone is reached in the ways that they are most um, engaged. I really like what you're describing about the the different ways that social media can support families and communication. I think that that's I think something we see a lot of in discussions about whether it's our own internet usage or uh, families looking at how to kind of set the goalposts on internet usage with their families, there can be some distrust of social media. And I, and I understand where that comes from, but at the same time, I think that there's, it all comes down to the relationship that people have with the tools that they use, just like any other tools. And I'm, I'm trying to hold myself back from going on a soapbox here because media studies is what my college degree is in. So I could talk for entirely too long about this, but just the idea of the various platforms, like you mentioned, Facebook, Instagram, email, Pinterest, different things like that. The platforms supporting the people is I think really the key to healthy social media use where it is a tool of engagement and a tool of connection at the same time by having these healthy interactions, it kind of minimizes some of the addictive properties that social media platforms can have and are often designed to have with things like random reinforcement and different things like that. I think that uh, this intentionality that you're describing about the content that you put out and then the ways that families can interact with it is a very sustainable way to build a social media presence. We are trying to really promote like beautiful content. So instead of mindless scrolling, you might see a Bible verse or you might see a quote from a saint. And just so these things that as you're scrolling, instead of just mindlessly scrolling and being like, oh, there's another cat video or there's another I don't know, whatever videos that you watch or pictures that you see, it's actually going to be meaningful and can kind of recenter you on what the goal of not only Colby, but like life is really about, which is obviously getting us all to heaven. So the more that we surround ourselves with that sort of idea and that sort of content, the better. And yes, social media can have that bad rap because it is very addicting or it can be, but it can also be really good because you might see something or read something that you might have never seen or heard or thought about before. And I think that that's really important too to remember that as long as you're surrounding yourself in this virtual context with good, wholesome, ideally Catholic, beautiful um, imagery and, and accounts, then good can really come from it. Definitely. Definitely. I, I like the way that you described the, bringing the true, the good, and the beautiful to the digital realm as well as the intellectual realm. And then I think another area that you all have worked on growing a lot this past year has been ways for families to communicate about their courses and about their Colby experiences. So would you tell us a little bit more about the both the official and unofficial Facebook groups that exist for Colby families? Sure, I can start with the um, Colby Class Facebook pages, which we've um, just put out um, recently. This, so the Colby, Colby Class Facebook pages are something we've encouraged this year. 
They are parent um, volunteer run and um, they are groups of parents who have students in the same grade and same graduating class. And it's, um, it's solely run by parent volunteers. It's not run by any staff members. And it's really a, a place for these parents um, with students um, in the same class to um, talk with each other, to find community, to ask, you know, for help um, if it comes, um, if it's related to homeschooling, specifically Colby curriculum. And it's, it's a really great opportunity to um, engage with other people who are in the same walk of life as, as you are. And if any, any of us who have been a part of Facebook groups, anytime you can ask a group of people who are in your same walk of life, a question, it's encouraging because you know, someone has an answer um, and someone can help you. And especially being an online school, it's extremely important. And I think in our COVID day and age as well, it's um, it's becoming even more necessary because people are just not, you know, they're not out and about right now. So I think even um, it's been really great for Colby because people are moving to using these online platforms more often. So they're becoming more used to it which is great for Colby because um, we've been doing this already for a while and um, we're just adding to it. We're adding to um, our resources and the class Facebook pages, I think are, have been a great way to do that. We now also have the Colby um, alumni group, which if you are a graduate and you're not part of it, just search Colby Academy alumni and join it. Um, because we are going to be really trying to ramp up alumni relations and that is going to start small in terms of just gathering, um, in graduate information, but we do have really big plans for it in the future. So that's just one other group that we would encourage if you're a graduate of any kind. So even if you've, um, gone through Colby from, kindergarten and you graduated through the online program or if you did a couple of classes through Colby and you are a graduate like anybody who is um, was part of the Colby family we welcome to fill out that form or enter into the Facebook group that's a neat way to keep keep everybody connected those Facebook groups the class ones that have been great this year you guys had posted where all the students come from from across the world which was really fascinating and we see that show up in the class group groups as well and they'll look for people in their local area, but also just to get a sense of the universality of, of, of Colby students. That's been neat to see. <laughs> I think it's important to mention for these, these class groups that for the enrolled families that there are a series of questions, three questions, not a series, it's not like a whole questionnaire, but there are a few questions for the people who want to join the class groups to answer to, to complete, to help us complete adding them to the group. So that's important to note, I think. Um, and I think it matters if you're trying to join on your phone. Sometimes the questions don't show up like they do if you're looking at it on a bigger screen for somehow, for some reason. I think I've heard that. From, so people might not realize there are questions to answer. But I think that that brings up a good point about the versatility of the different platforms where there are the public facing platforms with things like Instagram, and then with the more specific areas that Colby families can have these discussions that are more personal, that it is a, a protected area where you can maintain some privacy while still corresponding with people who are in, in a similar season to you. And so I, I think that that versatility is really, really cool that you've built that in, that there are the different audience reaches for the different types of social media. I think it's been great for building up community. People tend to think, well, how can you have community with this online school? Well, here's one way that that's been established and sustained and grown. So that's been great. There's also an unofficial group for called Colby Academy Homeschooling Families. It's not part of the Colby official group. So, but it's a good one for people who use Colby in, in any way, just one or two classes or fully enrolled or anything in between 
or if people who are interested in Colby, they can join that group pretty easily to get some more scoop on Colby. So several ways to engage with Colby on Facebook that way and Instagram. Okay. We have some wonderings here, some musings. What do you think, what would St. Maximilian Colby have thought about social media? I, um, I love St. Maximilian Colby. I am very familiar with um, his life and his story. And um, I think he would have, I think he would have tapped into it, in, into social media. He uh, came out with a publication called Night of the Immaculata. And um, I was just reading through some of his uh, bio information even before coming on here. I'm very familiar with his story, but kind of wanted a, a review, you know, who is St. Max again? Um, who's, you know, what's his story? And some things that really stuck out to me was that his Night of the Immaculata became one of the most popular publications in Poland. And that tells me a couple things. That tells me he was good at what he did. So he, you know, he was aware of how, um, you know, who his audience was and what what they wanted, what they were craving. I mean, I, he was one of the first of his time to come out with this information or this way of reaching people. And obviously people were craving that because it became so popular. And then it also just tells me that he knew that that's what people did. People read magazines and he it was his way of getting the word out about the gospel and and fighting you know the spiritual battle saint max loved um you know battle imagery or symbolism and he always wanted to enter the army and fight for poland and i think that um his night of the immaculata was was really his his social media of the time and so i really i really do believe he would have he would have jumped on it. This is our opportunity. This is our opportunity to get the word out, uh, to get the gospel out. And it's it's a way to do it fast. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely agree with that. I think one important thing to remember about him is that he was publishing like good, beautiful work. And people really crave that beauty. Um and like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times when people are scrolling through social media, it really is just like they're trying to fill that void. And instead of finding something that will fill that void that's inside of them, they just keep scrolling. And again, I'll reference the cat videos or YouTube, like random YouTube videos again. But he created this content that we still read and reference today. And that's, again, the sort of idea that we have here is that if we can use this technology, just like he used like printing and magazines as his modern technology, we use the social media as our modern technology to spread that good, beautiful work. Um, I think that he would be all for it. Again, as like Lauren mentioned, because we are procl proclaiming the gospel and trying to bring as many people to Christ as possible. Didn't he also have a radio show or am I? Mixing him up with Blessed Alberioni, or however you say his I last think he did also broadcast, yes. Another question we have is, where do you predict, as you keep up with the trends right now and, and work with social media, what do you think that social media will be like 10 or so years from now? This is a hard question. <laughs> Because if you would have said, if you might guys remember MySpace, that was like the big thing. Now it's like, is MySpace even still a thing? I think it is, but I honestly don't know. Um, so I think it really just kind of depends on what the technology looks like. I know that's sort of a cop-out answer, but God's given people such an amazing ability to create and to create good, again, beautiful things depending on if they're used for good or not. Um, and so it really is limitless as far as what it could look like in 10 years. Do I think that Facebook, Instagram are going to go away? No, not necessarily. But there probably is going to be some new platform that I don't know what it would do. 
but that some incredibly um, intelligent and creative person will come up with that tries to bring everybody together in a different way than Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of these other platforms do currently. So it really just depends on, um, I guess, people's creativity. Yeah, I I think um, I think social media in ten years is going to improve. I think um, I think there's a lot out there right now about uh, how social media can be misused, um, whether it's people using it, you know, as in a way that it's an addiction or that they're on it all the time. I also watched um, the Social Dilemma on Netflix, um, and that show was was really fascinating um, and was talking about how social media, from an insider perspective, is um, is sometimes misused. How businesses, you know, how Facebook, the people behind Facebook, the people behind um, Pinterest, and other other uh, social media platforms. Are, um, are misusing the social media, but that people are standing up against that. And, um, you know, some people at the end of watching that show are, I'm deleting my, you know, my social media accounts. And I had no desire to do that afterwards. I was like, you know, this is really eye-opening. This is something that um, we should be aware of. But we can always as as Bridget has been mentioning, have as we've been talking in this podcast, that that it's about using it well, and it's about putting stuff out there that's going to fill people's souls, and not you know take take away from that. So I think that there's a lot of promise um, for social media in the future, and I think people are standing up against any of the abuses that that are happening with it, and. Um, I think also there's probably going to be new um, new platforms out there that are are different. You know, maybe people are are out there coming up with social media platforms that have no advertising or um, you know that that don't use um, certain algorithms to manipulate behavior or think things like that. Um, but I I do think it's going to improve in in many ways, and that's exciting. I think it's really exciting. And it's something to look forward to and be a part of. One of the things I've mentioned this before that I appreciate among, there are many. One of the things I appreciate about Colby and the online school is the instruction that students receive in how to use the technology well, how to uh, op- how to behave online, to put it sort of bluntly, uh, how to use those tools and at least mitigate the tendency toward the, the tools using you or them as they are learning and at their stage of life, because this technology is is here to stay. It's something that's going to be an integral part of their lives. So this opportunity they have as Colby students to learn the ins and outs of it in in this way, infused with the worldview and the Colby formation, I think that serves them so well. And I see that extending to your social media usage as well. And reaching out to the families, I, because certainly this year with all the new students coming in, they're getting that on on the online school side and the homeschool side. And then the parents also, many of whom are new to homeschooling, are also getting their own version of it, I guess. So I think that's been really worthwhile and really beneficial, I'm sure, to many families. I think I may have already mentioned this book on our episode with Elizabeth Hoxie about health, including digital health, but I think if there are listeners who are interested in building on what they're seeing modeled in Colby and are looking for something to inform how they set up their family interaction with technology, a book I read recently that I thought made a lot of good points was Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. And it can be a little on the extreme side, like you mentioned, Lauren, with people saying, I'm going to delete all of my social media, but he offers some more uh, moderate ideas to think about too. Well, in the name of engagement, we would love for our listeners to offer input as to content they would like to see on the Colby social media channels on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. That's in addition to podcast topics, uh, we the podcast has an, has an email address, as I've mentioned before, podcast at colby.org. 
how do we reach the social media team to make suggestions? So you can message us on either Facebook or Instagram. And um, we do try to get back to all of your messages. So whether that be that you have a message about what you would like to see or questions about Colby in general, we are happy to answer those. And then we also have an email account as well. It's just social media at colby.org. Um, and if you were with us whenever we did our giveaway in the fall. Um, that's one way that you can enter because we do realize that not everybody has a social media or has the desire to have a social media account. And we don't want to um, to only have these giveaways be for people who have the social media accounts because we are a Colby family and we want everybody to be a part of it. So that's why we have the social media at colby.org account so that we can um, communicate with with those people who don't have those social media accounts. Good deal, good deal. We are working on some episodes coming up that we would love to get some listener input on as well. All right, if there are areas of the curriculum or related topics that folks would like to hear more about, please write to us about that. Perhaps maybe homeschooling realities folks have encountered this year. That would be helpful to us to hear what you're experiencing and how what questions you have about that or how other families can be of help. The, the Facebook groups have been a great help to a great many families. So here's another way to reach out and get some support that way. And recently, we've been talking about the idea of embracing the fifth day, uh, making use of the flexibility that Colby offers to build in time for rest and leisure and uh, just the development of the whole person. And it came up the idea of cultivating this sense of, of rhythm, of a rhythm of life and taking a moment and and recognizing how we are created to need rest at times. And extending from that is the idea of a rule of life, which some folks might be familiar with. There, there was a book I read many years ago called A Mother's Rule of Life that could easily tie into this conversation we've been having around embracing the fifth day. So if there are families who are familiar with this idea and would be so good as to write to us and let us know how they implement that, that would be really helpful. We're happy to keep you anonymous, especially like with mental health topics or uh, homeschooling realities. We're really just looking for what information would be helpful for our listeners or would be something that they'd like to hear. You know, we haven't talked about some of the hashtags that you've been using on your posts. So we do use on our posts, um, a few general hashtags. And if you're not familiar with what hashtags are, they're basically um, words or phrases that you can search for in Facebook, Instagram, and even Pinterest now that will bring up anything that is um, that has been tagged with that hashtag. So you'll be able to see every post or every picture or whatever that you're looking for that has that hashtag. So if you're familiar with blogging, it's that same idea where it's it's that category essentially, or like the um, the post has that specific phrase associated with it. So we use on every post, uh, Colby Academy Homeschool. Uh, we will also use Colby Academy Online. We are trying to do more with the homeschool portion just because it's a little bit more encompassing. So instead of just being specifically for online, again, the homeschool sort of wraps all of our families in, whether they do traditional homeschool online or self-paced courses. Um, we also try to use the Catholic education and Catholic homeschool hashtag, because if say you're on Instagram and you want to learn more, say you want to find out well, I might want to homeschool, but I don't even know where to start. So, I, but I want to homeschool with a Catholic organization or Catholic curriculum. I'm going to search for the hashtag Catholic homeschool. Same with the Catholic education as well. And then for each individual post, if it's apl uh, applicable, we will include other hashtags as well. Um, so just trying to, again, reach as many people as possible that might not typically come in contact with Colby, but that way we can, again, spread the word of the gospel and hopefully show people how wonderful Colby is and how wonderful the curriculum is as well. Sounds super. That's a good way to meet people where they are. That's an idea that has come up in previous episodes, meeting people where they are. And here it looks like this is a great way that you all are accomplishing that. So I know in addition to your social media work and, and, and all the things that you do at Colby, the technical support and 
teaching and so many things, marketing and things. You all ha have been presenting a lot of live events on Facebook. And I was watching one recently. I signed in a couple minutes early. I heard you guys kind of the backstage dimension, which I love. I love hearing how it all comes together, how you all are communicating with each other, making it happen, making the magic happen. It reminds me of my time back when I was working for the orchestra and would take artists to the TV station and I would be fascinated by the directors making it all come to all come together. I know we're at the time that we ask of you, so I want to be respectful of that. Did we miss anything that you all wanted to cover regarding social media? I think one thing to remember um, that we want to make people aware of, and this isn't just for social media, this is for Colby staff in general, is that like we are people too, and we are trying our best, and um, we appreciate your patience with us, even when we can't get Adobe Connect to work, or when we can't get your headphone to work. <laughs> and like there is definitely a backstage element to these things. It might seem it's like the little duck where like on the surface it might seem nice and smooth, but then underneath it's like paddling really hard to try to figure stuff out. Um, so again, we just appreciate your time and that you are patient with us. And um, and then again, please just tell us what you want to see, because we want to try to make things as easy and accessible for you as possible. And again, we want to try to be on every platform so that we can reach as many people as possible. Oh, that's a good, always a good reminder. <laughs> the person on the screen who answers the chat that's a person there. <laughs> Good to remember. Yes, very important. Well, my hat is off to you all on your tech support dimension and all the work that you're doing on behalf of Colby and the students and families that you serve. Thank you both so much for visiting with us today. We wish you all the best as you continue to serve and all the best for your families. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. realized how much editing went into podcasts i yeah. appreciate yeah. it much more now i like i know right yeah it's totally natural mm -hmm. oh good it's, yeah so i heard that mary our mother pray for us saint maximilian colby pray for us on my yard day gloriam